So we are live streaming this on Facebook for folks who can't make it on to uh, Zoom. I'm going to share the Facebook live stream. If you'd like to go to um, our Facebook page and save the live stream or share the live stream for folks who might you might who you might know who might be interested in seeing it. So I'm going to begin. Um, Just welcoming everyone here for this very important forum, this very important session with the New York City Districting Commission. We are in the middle of a redistricting process that takes place every 10 years as prescribed by the New York City Charter. The city council districts are adjusted to account for changes in population. And it happened in 2010. Um, and now it's happening based on the 2020 census. And we're here with the New York City Districting Commission to hear from them about the process, about uh, the timeline, and about how you can make your voices heard to uh, affect the process and the timeline and uh, affect the, the uh, results of the districting and make sure that you know, we have lines that are fully inclusive and representative of our communities. The Districting Commission came out with an initial draft map last month. And now they're going to have a series of public sessions where of hearings where folks can testify in person or virtually or email in um, your uh, feedback on the previous map or even make your own map and, and send it in. And we're going to hear about that tonight. It is very important that the residents of Council District 3 give their feedback into these maps. And I'll say right at the top that my concern with the initial map is that Hell's Kitchen is divided among three council districts. Um, and I've heard it from a lot of constituents who are going to be sending in their opinions about that and suggestions on how that how the map could be fixed. Council District Three is going to change because of all fifty one council districts, our council district had the most population growth between two thousand and ten and two thousand and twenty. What that means is I, as a council member, currently represent like 40,000 more people than other council districts. And in the, in the spirit of you know, equal representation, every council district should represent roughly the same amount of people. And in fact, um, the New York state reforms that were passed recently require that there be no more than a 5% deviation uh, between council districts. And Miranda and Brenda, I apologize if I'm saying a lot of things that you're about to say. We're gonna hear about this in a minute. Um, our, uh, in the chat, uh, my, um, my staff has, Pat has uh, pasted a link where you can go and make your own map for Council District 3 or any other district and submit that to the commission. So without further ado, I'm gonna introduce uh, Miranda Goodwin. Uh, Miranda, your name's cut off here. Rab and Brenda Queller. 
from the redistricting commission. We're going to hear from them. And then at the end, we're going to do a Q&A and have your questions answered. To ask a question, send a direct message to the person in this chat that says, uh, what does it say? Ask your questions here. Send questions here. Send questions here. So send a DM to send questions here. And we're going to, at the end, read off everyone's questions. So thank you again, everyone, for being here for this very important forum. And uh, I'm going to hand it off to Miranda and Brenda. Hi, everyone. And hi, Council Member. Thank you so much for having us. We're very excited to join us and talk about my favorite thing, which is redistricting. Um, so I am going to share my screen, if that's OK. Um, OK. So I didn't see my screen. Yep. Cool. All right. So um, like the council member said, we, we are here from the New York City Districting Commission. We're gonna give you a little 101 on the city council redistricting process, um, how it happens, why it happens, and how you can join us in this um, exciting effort you know, to kind of update the city district lines. As the council member said, um, we want things to be more equal, more representative, and um, you know, with the times. So as the council member mentioned, um, there is the census that happens every 10 years. I'm sure many of you on this call were involved in um, getting New Yorkers counted for the census. The census is quite literally a count of people. Um, it's required by the US Constitution. And oftentimes, once the US Constitution and once the census takes place, um, it triggers the redistricting of a lot of different districts. So I'm sure a lot of you are familiar that recently there was state legislative and congressional district um, redistricting. And now we're faced with the city council redistricting. Um, state legislative and congressional redistricting usually happens in the year ending in one because there are elections for those positions in the year ending in two. The city council charter then says that city council redistricting will happen in the year ending in twos for the elections happening in the year ending in three. Um, that's quite literally the language it uses. I'm not paraphrasing. So just to be clear, this happens every 10 years. Um, so in the city charter, um, sorry, the task of drawing these 51 new city council districts are assigned to what we, is known as this New York City Districting Commission. Um, there's 15 commission members. Seven of those are appointed by the mayor. Eight are then appointed by the council. Um, of those eight, five are appointed by the council majority speaker and three by the council minority leader. Um, the city charter also you know, sets out criteria for choosing these commission members, such as you know, the borough that they are from, the party that they are from, minority status, overall diversity. And the reason to do that um, is so that this commission is representative of this you know, vast, diverse, incredibly interesting city that we have to make sure that everyone's voices are represented as best as possible. So this is a little bit about the commissioners. Um, I would be here until this time next week if I gave you all of their biographies and you know, their expertise in New York City, but it's really been a pleasure to work with all of them because they really um, each bring so much knowledge of different corners of New York City to the table. And it's really interesting to, um, you know, hear how those um, their experiences help them make these decisions that will be leaving us with the city council lines for the next 10 years. So a little bit about why this is important. Um, so the census in 2010, we had 8.2 million people living in New York City. And with the census in 2020, we now have 8.8 .8 million people. Um, it's about 630,000 new people, which is equivalent to the size of Detroit, right? So that's literally as if the city of Detroit came um, got on planes, probably wouldn't walk to New York City, and then we would have to readjust things, right? So with 51 city council districts and a population of 8.8 .8 million people, um, the average ideal district size is around 173,000. To be exact, it's 172,882 people. Um, so I probably don't need to tell any of you why this is important, but the city council obviously is incredibly important to every person living in New York City, right? It's a co-equal branch of our local government with the mayor. Um, the last budget passed by the city council in June was $101 billion. Um, that's billion, not million, right? That's bigger than most states. And we're talking about safety, sanitation, parks, land use, um, agency oversight, community board appointees, among a million other things, right? So it's really important for us to have this process include as many New Yorkers as possible, um, because this is really important, right? We're talking about who you're voting with um, in your city council. We're talking about who, you know, you're asking for budgetary fundings with or discretionary fundings, participatory budgeting, um, things like that. 
So a little bit about the data that the commission is looking at. Um, we're talking about obviously population is where we start with, right? So the pop, the Hispanic population in New York City grew by over 150,000 people from the 2010 census to the 2020 census. Um, the Asian population grew by almost 350,000 people. Um, the city's black population shrunk by 84,000 people and the white population shrunk by 3,000 people. Um, so a little bit about kind of the criteria and the laws governing the commission. So we'll start at the very top with federal legislation. Um, the Voting Rights Act of 1965 mentions drawing districts, right? And any district um, in the country falls under this law. So it prohibits a new district map from denying or diluting the voting power of racial and language minorities. So that is kind of this overarching criteria that the commission is working with. Um, another criteria, as the council member mentioned, is population deviation. And I just want to flag that the reason we have this on the slideshow and the reason it's so important is that um, in 2021, in the fall of 2021, Governor Hochul signed a law into action that says that all districts um, in New York must fall within a 5% deviation. Um, prior to her signing this law, the rule was 10%. Right, so let's we'll we'll backtrack for a little bit. Um, the last time this commission was in effect was 2012, 2013, and the average ideal district size was close to 160,000. So that meant by the end, by the final maps, um, any two districts, even if they were neighboring, could be about 16,000 people apart. Right, so that means you'd have two council members representing two districts, but one district has 16,000 more mouths to feed, essentially, right? 16,000 more people who can vote in those elections, 16 more thousands of people that can apply for funding, um, that are using their parks, that are using their system. So the idea of this 5% deviation rule, um, it's to get closer to the spirit of one person, one vote, right? It's to make districts more equal, to make representation more equal. Um, I also want to flag that the New York City District and Commission, and you know, for that matter, most uh, redistricting commissions in the state have never had to deal with this rule before, right? So it really is a novel challenge that is ahead of the commission this time around. So a little bit about the explicit criteria that is in the city charter that governs um, the work that the commission is doing. So beyond the VRA and the 5% deviation, we're talking about keeping neighborhoods and communities intact, keeping districts compact, limiting crossover districts, um, avoid splitting voters of the same political party, aka gerrymandering, and number five, avoiding oddly shaped districts. And I would like to note that um, in the charter, these are listed in a specific order. These are not an accident, um, the, the order that they're listed in, and I'll explain some of them a little bit more. Uh, Miranda, will you explain to folks what crossover districts are in yes. future slides? Thank you. You are right ahead of me. Sorry, let me get, there we go. I haven't moved my, uh, my Zoom. So a little bit about the crossover districts. Um, there is a limit. So the idea is that they should be limited um, to the maximum extent practicable. So it's not to say that there's no such thing as crossover districts or that the city charter says that you should never do them. Um, it's to limit to them to the maximum extent practicable, right? And um, if there are any lawyers on the call that can be stretched and understood differently, but the idea is that if a district does cover any two boroughs, no other district can connect between those two boroughs, right? So currently as it stands, District 22 um, stretches from Queens and it includes Rikers Island, which is part of the Bronx. So in the 2012, 2013 maps, no other district would be legally allowed to cross between the Queens and the Bronx. Um, the same with District 8, right? That goes between the Bronx and Manhattan. Um, because there is one district that crosses between the same two boroughs, no other district could do so. Um, district 34 between Queens and Brooklyn, um, you get the idea, right? So there's only one district is allowed to cross between any two boroughs. Sorry, there we go. Um, so a little bit about public input, right? Um, the commission really is dedicated to incorporating public input into this process. Um, we've had a lot of hearings and I'll talk more about the hearings that are coming up, but we really want to hear from New Yorkers, right? Everyone on this call and everyone on, um, you know, listening at home, you're all experts on your communities in a way that, you know, even if they are experts in their communities, 15 commissioners can never know anything, right? It's a huge city, 8.8 .8 million people. And so we're really asking to hear from New Yorkers in this process. Um, you know, it happens once every 10 years, right? And this is your chance to, to give your input. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the opportunities for people to participate. Um, you can testify to public hearing and you can email testimony to our email, which is public testimony at redistricting.nyc.gov. You can send us mail um, and you can also use District R to create your own map. So District R is a free um, open source tool that is, you know, people around the country are using for redistricting. 
um, the commission has created a separate layer on District R to give you accurate mapping data that's almost basically identical to what the commission uses when it creates its maps. Um, and you get that 172,882, you get population data that, that we're using from the census, and you basically are like a commissioner, right? You can send us your maps, you can have fun, you can create one district, you can create 51, you can create five. <laughs> and the point of that is for you to, um, to understand, you know, what it really goes into creating a district and the challenges, as well as for you to show us, hey, it's actually not that hard to put my community in a district. I did it, right? So we want to hear from you, um, you know, create a map and email it to us, and it's really important. Um, and then on the next slide, I'll talk a little bit more about opportunities to testify. Sorry, oh my gosh. There we go. So a little bit about where we are in the process, right? We have certain timelines that the charter provides for us. Um, and the commission's kind of hard end date is December 7th, 2022. And I'll explain a little bit more about where we are in this process so far. So we've already had five um, public hearings. We had one in each borough. Um, we had over 170 people testify. We've received over 500 pieces of testimony. And um, while that not, might not sound a lot, like a lot, it actually is because it really helps the commissioners um, inform the decisions that they're making. So the purpose of those um, five public hearings was, um, we, as the council member mentioned, we did release um, a set of draft maps, a preliminary plan on July 15th, and you know that has been made available to the public. We want to hear your feedback. We want you to look at how the old district compares to the new district and tell us, hey, you got it wrong, or hey, you got it right, or hey, you got it half wrong, but you forgot this community center, right? Again, you're the experts in your communities and we need to hear from you. Um, and part of the, you know, the reason that this preliminary plan is to get that conversation started, right? To look at these new parameters that we're under, whether it be the 5% deviation, whether it be the new um, ideal population and to understand it's a check-in, right? It's to see how things are going. Um, and so starting next week, I'm very excited. We are having our second round of public hearings. So the first will be August 16th, a Tuesday, the next August 17th, a Wednesday. Um, August 18th, a Thursday, August 21st, a Sunday, and August 22nd, a Monday. Um, as you will see, all of these hearings, there's one in each borough. Um, and while you know we did this for convenience, we want everyone in the city to have a chance to participate. Um, no hearing is limited to where you live um, or you know which borough you work in or anything like that. Um, you're able to attend any of these hearings and you're also able to attend virtually. Um, that's very important to us that you know anyone can attend all of these hearings both in person and virtually. Um, and after you know after we have this set of public hearings, the commission gets back to work. Um, you know they'll revise the maps that we've published so far and then we will submit a plan to the city council on September 22nd. So a little bit of an infographic of what I've just said, maybe this might help people understand it a little bit more um, visually. So we've already been through the first round of public hearings. Um, we voted to release a draft plan. Now we're at our second round of public hearings. So right here, if you can see my cursor, um, and then we'll have a public meeting of the commission to vote on the final plan. That will be September 22nd. Um, and then the city council gets to consider our plan. So if the city council does nothing um, or formally approves it, then the commission, you know, we submit the final plan to the city clerk and those are the district plans for the next 10 years. Um, alternatively, the council can submit a formal objection. Um, the commission will have, you know, revisions, we'll have another round of public hearings, and then we will submit this map um, again to the city clerk. So a little bit about some resources that we have. We really want you all to check out um, you know, our draft maps. Again, we're working with this new set of parameters, this population growth, the deviation, um, you know, different demographic changes as well, right? It's an interesting set of challenges ahead of the commission. And so we've created a draft that we want your input on. It's very important to us. Um, like I said, use District R, explore it. It's a lot of fun. Um, I think it's fairly easy to learn. And I think that it's a really interesting exercise in what does it look like to create new district lines for the city council? What does it look like to think about, did my current line serve me? How could they be better? Um, also, Department of City Planning has a fantastic um, census map where they've downloaded a lot of really specific data by neighborhood, um, ethnicity, race, I think even age. They've done a lot of really cool stuff and they've made it very visually um, appealing and understandable. And I encourage you all to check that out, especially for your own neighborhoods to understand where growth is happening um, and who's growing, right? And, you know, check out your current city council maps. Take a look at your district and say, see if it works. So with Brenda, that... Could, could you or Brenda put those links in the chat as we go? Definitely, we can put all of those links in the chat. And um, also this presentation is available for download on our site and you'll be able to click through the links there, but we can get those links in the chat, definitely. 
Oh yeah, that'd be great if you could put a link to the presentation as well. Yeah, we can definitely do that. Um, but with that, you know, like I said, we're really, we're here, we're listening. The commissioners, um, you know, they really do value public testimony. Um, you know, I've seen people listen to things and, it, you know, it starts a conversation, it really does. And so we, it, it's our hope that by doing this, by explaining the process to everyone on this call, you guys talk to your friends, your families, your neighbors, um, you know, we, we get as many people involved in this, po in this process as possible. Great. So with that, I will take questions. Thanks, and and you could probably turn off the uh, presentation if you'd like the full screen. Um, let's get right into it. Um, question number one, is it true that there are not 50% women on the commission? How were these folks chosen? Um, so that is true, as far as I understand. Um, these people were chosen, again, the mayor appoints seven of them, uh, the city council speaker appoints five, and the city council minority leader appoints three. Um, there is criteria that is listed in the city charter for choosing them. Um, so, yeah, I hope that answers. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> the new District 3 map seems to decrease the proportion of Asian and Latinx populations by comparison to the previous Council District 3. Doesn't that violate the 1965 Voting Rights Act? So I would say that it depends. I, I, I can't confirm that that's true. I just want to be clear. I'm, my, my answer does not accept that to be true. I, I don't know the exact specifics um, data on District 3. So I just want to couch my answer in that. Um, it depends the percent that it decreases it by. Um, if it's 1%, that might not be a Voting Rights Act violation. Um, but we, you know, we do have counsel and we, we take the Voting Rights Act very seriously. And that's the kind of thing that you know, if you feel so strongly, or not even that you feel strongly, but if you feel that that is, you know, a violation or just not right, um, you know, please send us testimony. Unfortunately, this call does not count as public testimony. Um, so, you know, put it in writing, send it to us. We're listening. We're here. Um, but, you know, we do take the Voting Rights Act very seriously. So sometimes, you know, a one percentage point difference um, might not be a violation of the Voting Rights Act. And by the way, folks, you can also put your questions in the chat as well. Um, Hell's Kitchen resident here, what is the actual population of Hell's Kitchen compared to the required population of a new district? Um, that I'm not sure because Hell's Kitchen is a neighborhood, right? So um, it doesn't make it a district de facto by being a neighborhood. So the new population that we're looking for, the average ideal population, again, it's average, um, is 172,882. And just to explain that 5% deviation in a little bit more detail, what it means is that once the map is said and done, um, the smallest district and largest district cannot be more than 5% away from each other. That's what it means, right? So we're using that number 172,882 as um, that's if you take 51 or 8.8 .8 million divided by 51. And uh, Christine Gorman um, answered in the chat that the population of Hill's Kitchen is about 48,000 people. So it's a little bit less than a third of an ideal district, um, between a third and a quarter, right? So. Um, is it correct that District 3 currently has the second highest population in the city? Um, I'm aware that it has the highest deviation as it stands. So compared to that 172,000 number, it has one of the highest um, overpopulation. So let's, to put this in context, right? The, the district that you currently represent, council member, was drawn in 2012 or 2013, it was finalized by 2013, right? And the population number that it was supposed to hit was close to 160,000 people. Um, as it currently stands, right? When you're talking about is the most overpopulated, you're looking at if you take the, sh you know, let's talk about shoes, right? <laughs> there was 160,000 was one shoe and now we have a new shoe, which is 172,882. So if you put the, old, the new parameters on the old district, that's what that's looking at. Does that make sense? That, yes, it does. I, I know that the second highest, so Council District 3 had the most population growth in the decennial census. The second highest is the district that Lincoln Wrestler represents in Brooklyn, which has the Greenpoint waterfront and uh, 
you know, both these districts on the west side of Manhattan, we had a swath of the city that was less developed, that had has been developed over the last uh, decade or so in the same, in that district. And then you have some districts that actually went down in population a little bit. Right. I, I just want to be clear not to confuse um, deviation of of where the population currently stands and population growth, because a lot of districts throughout the city had explosive growth. Right. Um, yeah, so District 3 and District 33 are currently the most overpopulated with that 172,000 number. Right, right, yeah. right. But again, 10 years ago, these districts um, had started at such, at such wildly different places, right? Two districts could have been 16,000 people less than the district next to them. So, Miranda, we're going to be encouraging folks to submit testimony at this upcoming hearing and online. Can you please uh, give your thoughts to folks on what does the ideal testimony look like? How long is it? Should it be long? Should it be short and to the point? Uh, how much detail? What are the elements of it? So you'll get three minutes to speak. Um, there's no page limit of what you can send in written words, right? And I think it's compelling to tell us what does the district that you want to live in look like, right? And be as specific as possible. I've seen commissioners over and over and over ask people, can you tell me the exact street that you think your district should start or end at, right? And it might sound silly, but we're talking about an incredibly dense city. And to your point, council member, your district is incredibly dense, right? So a couple blocks, we could be talking about five, 10,000 people, right? So as specific as you can be as possible, and also as clear as you can be possible about why you think the district should exist in the way that you're suggesting it, right? So talk about the things that, you know, the places that keep your communities together, right? Um, the things that you have in common with your neighbors, um, why you think that you should be with them, you know, why you think that you guys should be voting together, right, to elect a representative, why you think that these are the people that you should be um, applying for budgetary funding with, right? These are the things that, you know, when I said it earlier about why the city council matters, we're looking, um, the commission is looking for what kinds of things do people have in common, right? Who is best served by being in a district together? Um, and how does that allow your government to best serve you? I hope that's an answer to it your question. It is, yeah, thank you. And would it help if people, when giving testimony, specifically refer to the charter mandated criteria that these maps that, that this commission has to operate by? Yeah, I mean, the, you know, the charter is public for a reason, right? We, we're all bound by the city council charter and, you know, the commission is governed by the charter. And again, it's an art and a science, right? You have the census data, you have um, both federal, state and city law, and you have public testimony, right? So the commission is trying to make a meal, if you will, out of all of those different ingredients. Um, Linda asks in the chat, are the New York City district lines the same lines as for the U.S. Congress that we'll be voting on next week. The those are different. Those are the federal congressional lines. Last year, uh, melting into this year, there was redistricting for the state legislative seats and the federal seats, and that process went off the rails when the districting commission that the state had impaneled proposed lines, but the way that that process uh, is, the legislator had the the legislature had the opportunity to reject those lines, and then draw their own, which is what they did. They drew their own. Those lines were then rejected by the courts, and they put a. Uh, quote unquote, special master in charge to draw the, the Senate and the congressional lines. The assembly lines didn't change because uh, no one sued over those. They only sued over the Senate and the congressional. In the New York City process, the city council is also going to get the opportunity to vote. But if we vote it down, we don't get to draw our own lines. It goes back to the districting commission for another round of 
public engagement. And then those lines are the final lines. So did I get it right, Miranda? Yes, that's exactly right. I, I was a part of the state commission and, and the, this process is very different, right? It's, it's very different for a reason. Um, this is written into the charter that this is the way it will go. So the city council will have a chance to reject um, this, you know, this map that the commission will be submitting on September 22nd. Um, but then the final one, as I understand it, is binding. So. Oh, wow. You were part of that. You were on that commission staff. Wow. That must have been interesting. <laughs> um, I like redistricting. So. <laughs> <laughs> Miranda, we didn't plan this in advance, but do you think you could open up the draw your own map? Yeah, definitely. Page and that. show us how to do that. Definitely. And and as you're doing it, you know, maybe explain why it's important for people to submit a map or helpful. Yeah. If you can just give me a moment, let me find the link. All right. So I played with it a little bit and it is challenging because when you tug on a on a line just a little bit, it throws the population off. So you got to like pull back somewhere else, and then you take a little here, and then you lose some there. And it has to it has to be within that five percent. Yes, to the council member's point, you know, I think what's fun about trying your hand at this is you understand how. It, it really is, and it's a it's an exciting challenge, but it's a real challenge ahead of the commission. Um, drawing maps is not easy. Getting things right is not easy. Doesn't mean we're not going to try very, very hard, um, but it's hard, right? So I actually have it pulled up here. Um, I will share my screen again. Hold on one second. Just make sure. All right, can everyone see my screen? Yep. Great. So this is um, the home page. Um, I put this same link in the chat. Um, this is the New York City Council mapping page. So, like I said, District R is you know free, open source, um, but we created a special layer for residents of New York City to draw accurate maps. Um, that was really important to us that you know New Yorkers have the tools that are the most accurate that help. Um, New Yorkers draw maps that are useful to the commissioners as they are embark on this process. So um, I would encourage you all to read the text when you have a chance. Um, so again, there's two different things that you can do. You can draw a city council district or you can identify a community. And so, um, you know, Health Kitchen, obviously within um, Council District 3, that would be the kind of thing that you could say, hey, you know, I noticed Health Kitchen on Google Maps, it looks like it's here, but really, let me show you the boundaries, right? And that would be the kind of thing where you could identify a community. Um, it doesn't need to be exact exactly, you know, the numeric um, perfection of a city council district, but it's still really helpful for the council district to know because, you know, you take um, Hell's Kitchen, right, and you say, okay, it's 48,000 people, um, as someone mentioned in the chat, so then you think, okay, what else should be in a district with it, right, and then you can start to think about communities because that's really, um, you know, what the heart of redistricting about is allowing communities to um, elect people that they think represent them in a numerically scientific, um, equally representation way. <laughs> So this is a city council layer. So for example, you would grab it um, when, you, when you hold on your cursor and grab, and then you would click this paintbrush up here. Um, so I'm gonna make a pink district and you would just start to paint and you can zoom in. Can I zoom in? And um, you can change the size of your paintbrush. And what you're doing is each one of these is a census block. So um, when you, if you see this little rectangle, right? Each, each side of that, everyone who lives on that rectangle um, is included in that census block. And you see this number over here. So I've selected essentially 248 people. Um, obviously I would need to add a lot more to create a council district of 172,882. So I will make my brush bigger and I will grab blocks of census blocks together. Um, and this is, you know, quite similar to the way mapping experts do it. Um, part of the reason it grabs water is, of course, you know, water gets to be in people's jurisdiction. Um, it definitely matters. So I know it can be a little confusing, but yeah, so it's it's a lot of fun and you keep grabbing and maybe I'll make the district bigger because I know I want to include, you know, all of Chelsea in this district, let's say. And so I'll keep going up and then I would switch back to the cursor and grab. Um, yeah, so you can just... It takes a minute to get the hang of it, but I think once you do, it's a lot of fun and it really is a great exercise. So see, I've already gone too far. Now I'm at 188,000, so I can go back. Now I'm at 181. And look, I'm at a district that's pretty darn close to um, the ideal district size. How does one know uh, how 
much deviation they had, like the 5%. Oh, there yeah. we go. You scroll yeah. down. Right. I see it now. Screen. Okay, see great. It now? Yep, I see it now. That's great. Yeah, and then um, my favorite part is the data layer. So I can now I can paint a different district in a different color, um, and I'm going like this, right? And so then I can um, show numbers, right? So then it creates numbers for my districts. Um, you can use the current city council lines if you want to understand, okay, how do I, you know, I like my district, but I know it has too many people. So what can I do to keep it similar? You can create this layer. Um, my personal favorite community board layer. So you can look at the boundaries of a community board, because as I mentioned, one of the many responsibilities a council member has is, um, you know, one of the appointing figures to the community boards. Um, and of course, borough lines, right, which might not be so necessary for a place like Manhattan, but if you are, let's say, in Queens and Brooklyn, you might get lost, right, if you're not looking closely. Um, so that's a really helpful thing. And then, of course, you can look at population by race. Um, you can explore different um, voting variables. Um, you can look at different race. Um, you can do shit. You can do basically heat maps if you wanted versus regions. Um, it's a lot of fun. You can build a coalition, basically putting you know different ethnicities together to make a district. Um, yeah, and then it, it'll evaluate your. It'll give you the breakdown in here, and you can compare your districts numerically. Great. I'm going to rattle off some of the other questions we received. Other than population numbers and demographics, how are communities and neighborhoods assessed? So there is the neighborhood maps, um, you know, and, and again, that's the kind of thing that we really need public testimony on, right? Because there's a lot of different neighborhood maps floating out there, um, but we want to hear from communities what they think their neighborhood is, right? I think a lot of neighborhoods are kind of amorphous. I mean, you look at Chinatown in the Lower East Side, right? I have friends, you know, that was meeting a few weeks ago and they said, no, that's Chinatown. And I said, no, it's not, right? So you, you don't really know. <laughs> you know, everyone has a different- Everyone's definition. favorite New York City pastime. Exactly, exactly. But, but it's our favorite pastime too, right? Because we're really yes. thinking about if you have to have boundaries, where is a good place, right? And, yeah. and who wants to be together? Who wants to vote together? Who wants to apply for budget together? Who wants to elect a representative together, right? Um, yeah. It's really about, you know, making the city- equally represented as possible. Uh, someone asked, what would be the effective date of these district changes? So my understanding is that um, the, the last um, council plan will be submitted December 7th. Um, and again, the reason that the city charter, um, it, literally, it quite literally says that the district and commission will meet and draw lines in the years ending in two, um, because there are elections in the years ending in three, right? So. Um, I hope that's and right. and then the the city council elections next year will be on these new maps. Exactly, exactly. So the idea is to get them done in time for people to petition, campaign, you know, win the support of voters um, organically, and then you know have an election. Uh, someone asked, "What would it look like for you if your district is broken up? How do you know what area you will be representing?" The truth is that the incumbent council members don't know uh, what areas will be running in until the maps are done. Um, until they're done, there's really no way of knowing. Um, so when they when they are finalized, that'll provide clarity for everyone. Um, once someone draws a map on that site, can they be saved and sent as an attachment in an email to the commission? Yes, that is what we were hoping you will do. You can send us the link. Um, you can download it as a PDF and send it to us um, any which way you send it to us. And if you, you know, if you sent us a map and it says, or you say, hey, in my attached map, and then, you know, there's no map there. We have someone reading these emails. Like, I promise you, they don't go into a black box. I promise you. <laughs> and so if there's some error, we'll, you know, we'll try to sort it out. Um, but we, the whole point of us, you know, working with District R and going the extra step to, to build this option with accurate population data is so that, you know, you can try your hand at it and we can use it. This isn't just like a fun game, right? This is representation. This is budgets. This is the next 10 years and we take it very seriously. So yes, please send it to us. But three questions about the, the Hell's Kitchen lines. Um, why is Hell's Kitchen proposed to be divided up into three separate districts compared to other neighborhoods that are entirely together in a single district 
are just split into two districts. What specific criteria led Hell's Kitchen being split into three parts in the draft map? And, and then someone asked, if Hell's Kitchen is carved up into three districts, are we then absorbed into other existing districts? So I'll answer the last one first. Um, you know, when this process is said and done, if you live within the New York City limits, you will have representation, right? No one will be left without a council member. I, I promise, I, I can make very few promises in this game, but that is what I can make a promise. Everyone will have representation. You will have a council member. Um, with regards to Health Kitchen, you know, we don't really comment on specific districts, but I will just say, and I, I hope this doesn't sound like lip service, we need to hear this from you, right? We need to hear from you and your friends and your neighbors that you feel that your community has been split and that you don't want it that way. Um, you know, these preliminary maps are just drafts, right? They were meant to start a conversation. They were meant to be a starting point, not a finish point. Um, it's not the end game, you know, we're, we're not there yet, right? And we're at a really crucial time of public input where the commissioner's ears are wide open and their eyes are wide open. And so if you and everyone on your block, you know, you all send us the same letter or you, you know, write a petition that everyone signs, right? And you say, we all agree and we feel that this, um, that we don't like this or we do like this, that's the kind of thing we need to hear. And I will say there's power in numbers, right? Um, it's it's a city of 8.8 million people. There's a lot of people to make happy. And, um, you know, the more people that echo a similar sentiment, the more it gets heard, right? Um, so. And the problem with cutting a distinct neighborhood, slicing it into many different parts, is it, it dilutes the political representation of that neighborhood. So they then each represent just a tiny piece of another council member's neighborhood and it's confusing like you know on in in hell's kitchen you also have on like 47th and 9th there's like four different police precincts depending on what side of the street you're on you know it's the 10th it's the midtown north it's the midtown south so to the extent that neighborhoods can be kept whole that's that's important Definitely. I, you know, I think all the commissioners would agree that keeping neighborhoods together is important. Um, and again, it's, we're at a crucial time where we need to hear from you, right? I mean, I'm, you know, so happy to be here, but this doesn't count as testimony, right? So we want any, any person who feels that way, please, please, please write us, um, get your friends to write us. I think there's power in numbers, right? It's, it's a city of 8.8 .8 million people. And so there's really power in numbers. And in um, Hell's Kitchen, there is a, uh, a campaign being organized, a Keep Hell's Kitchen Whole campaign, because this is a government forum. I can't really say which group it is, but uh, we'll find a way to get the word out about that. We want everyone to make their voices heard in all parts of my, of, of our uh, community, Council District 3, um, whether you're down in the village, Chelsea, Flatiron, <laughs> We want everyone to engage in the process, make your maps, send them in, let the commissioners know what's important to you. Mm -hmm. um, do we have any other questions? <laughs> um, Jeffrey Rowland asked, when will they be final? Could you repeat that, Miranda, when? Yeah. December 7th is um, the, the, the latest kind of end date of, of us submitting to the, to the city clerk. So on December 7th, everyone will know, like those are the lines. So hot. Yeah, you know, I, I, that I sound like I don't, I'm not totally certain on that, but I know that's when we submit to the city, um, to the city clerk, yeah. Got it. Well, I wanna really, really thank you, Miranda and, and Brenda for being here. Oh, and for your work. I want to thank everyone for being on this Zoom. We're going to be reaching out to you with um, a copy of this presentation. And we're also going to be uh, emailing you about the link uh, about that to the upcoming testimony, um, the upcoming Hi. hearing. Sorry, I'm being distracted by RK who keeps toggling the mic on. Um, our Manhattan hearing will be taking place August 22nd um, at the Schomburg Center in right. Research for Black Culture, which is um, in Harlem. And again, you can join any hearing you want. Um, that's just the one that a lot of people will be discussing 
the lovely island of Manhattan. So. And do you think, Miranda, that it's more effective for folks to testify in person? What's your personal versus opinion? Versus think, virtually? Yeah, versus virtually or just an email? No, I, I think, um, look, I think if you can attend in person or virtually, I think that there's, you know, something to be said for compelling testimony that, you know, it is real, right? But all of it is created equal at the same time. Um, it, it's not any less serious. I, but I think if you can um, join virtually or in person, we would love that. Yeah. Wonderful. Howard um, Levitsky helpfully pointed out that if you hit the three dots at the bottom of the chat, you'll get a button to download just the chat with all its links. Very cool. So again, I really want to thank everyone for being here. Very, very important time for our community. This will determine the, the lines of our representation in the city council for the next decade. A decade is a long time. Think of everything that's happened since uh, 2012, my gosh. But thank right. you again, everyone. Yeah, and thank you so much. And please submit testimony however you can. Um, the more, the better. I, I mean it when I say it. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.